Verse 13 says, if any man takes a wife and goes in unto her, this is a great law, this is very controversial, and then turns against her and charges her with shameful deeds and publicly defames her and says, I took this woman, but when I came near her, I did not find her a virgin, then the girl's father and her mother shall take and bring out the evidence of the girl's virginity to the elders of the city at the gate. The girl's father shall say to the elders, I gave my daughter to this man for a wife, but he turned against her. And behold, he has charged her with shameful deeds, saying, I did not find your daughter a virgin, but this is the evidence of my daughter's virginity, and they shall spread the garment before the elders of the city. So the elders of that city shall take the man and chastise him, and they shall fine him a hundred shekels of silver and give it to the girl's father, because he publicly defamed the virgin of Israel, and she shall remain his wife. He cannot divorce her all his days, but if this charge is true, that the girl was not found a virgin, then they shall bring out the girl to the doorway of her father's house and the men of the city shall stone her to death because uh, she has committed an act of folly in Israel by playing the harlot in her father's house. Thus you shall purge the evil from among you. So people think that what this law is saying is if somebody accuses a girl and says that she was not a virgin when I found her, her father and mother have to bring out the sheet with the blood stain on and if they can't do that, then she gets stoned to death. If they can do that, then the man just gets fined 100 shekels. So people think that this is massively unfair. That's not what this law is saying, though. In order to understand this law, we have to understand what the Torah says about the death penalty. We have to understand a little bit about the procedure of what it is to bring the death penalty on someone. Deuteronomy 17.6 says, At the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses shall he that is worthy of death be put to death, but at the mouth of one witness he shall not be put to death. Okay, so at the mouth of this guy who's come out and said she was not a virgin when I slept with her, she cannot be put to death. Okay, an inquiry needs to be made whether or not she is not a virgin. If it can be proved, as it says here, if this charge is true that the girl was not found a virgin, so the judges would be responsible in this case for looking to see if they could find evidence. If they find evidence that she has said that she was a virgin, she's not a virgin, then she's stoned to death. The man, okay, he gets chastised because, okay, we see in this law here, it says, if a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him that which is wrong, then both the men between whom the controversy is shall stand before Yehovah, before the priests and the judges, uh, which shall be in those days, and the judges shall make diligent inquisition, and behold, if the witness be a false witness, and he hath testified falsely against his brother, then ye shall do to him as he, as he had thought to have done unto his brother. So if this guy coming out saying, this girl isn't a virgin, if that could result in her death, then he would be stoned to death if he was found to be a false witness. He's not though, he is just chastised and he's given a fine of a hundred shekels. He is not enough on his own to be a witness against her. The three possibilities are that he comes out with this charge, they make an inquisition, okay? They find her guilty at the mouth of two or three witnesses and then she's stoned to death. That's one possibility. The other possibility is that he makes this charge, it can't be proven, okay? He's still got the right to a divorcer if he wants then, but if he's divorced her and it's not right, then that's between him and God at that point. The other possibility is he comes out as the only witness against her. She's found to be uh, not guilty because her parents bring out evidence and then he's charged a hundred shekels. Okay? It's not an either or situation. Either she's stoned or he gets uh, a fine. That's not the way that it works. And it's certainly not dependent on whether or not her parents can produce a bloody sheath. Okay, that is, all that law is saying is this is particular evidence that is accepted as evidence of her virginity. Obviously, we know that the hymen can be broken at any point in the girl's life. She's not necessarily going to bleed as evidence of her virginity. And that is something that people have a problem with this law about. But it's just misunderstanding the Torah not understanding the Torah in context, what it says. 